to Bill Harris Arena at the Birmingham Crossplex, and we are getting ready to start as number five, Devontae Patterson, is rubbing that basketball, trying to give it a, <laughs> uh, as we say down in South Louisiana, some good gree gree. Yeah, lucky get run. And we see Grambling in there. Uh, we call it it. They want to utilize to attack it. They're running a lot of curl action, but really what you want to do is get the ball to the high post and then look opposite or attack. And they haven't gotten it into the high post yet. Wade Copeland, Sela, and Cam Langley back in the lineup now for the Spartans of Norfolk State. Eddie Robinson red. He brought the red to Grambling, and they have definitely adopted that. Down low. And, a foul is going to be and we are ready to tip it off. Dennis Jones. Mapoyo is at center court along with Irvin Ellis and Grambling State controls possession. And that is his coach. Larry McKnight at the free throw line. Ivy Smith Jr. He is the assist machine in the SWAC. He is the assist leader and also the assist leader for Grambling State. They want to try to run probably the most athletic team in the conference. 70% free throw shooter. Dallas Boak Hilliard bobbles the ball. The defense for Prairie View is one that will be intense for an entire game. Both teams are shooting. They like to play high intensity, high energy. From the free throw line. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's important. They're in the zone, but it's it's almost like they're running an aggressive man. They're so in they're in every passing lane. They're contesting every both pass and potential shot. Under two minutes to Long go. three and goes awry, and you can tell that defensively nice Irwin Ellis and has had his hands, goes his fist Hamilton. closed, saying, yeah, Hamilton we got that. We're just underway here Southern in the first half of the men's semifinal between Purdue and Grambling State. Now, Those State it was Grambling State's women who lost to Southern University in the first semifinal on the women's side right before this game. James Red, along with Cynthia oh, Cooper and right Arthur we Trish, and Morgan will be roaming the sidelines. You know, both teams came out in the John zone, Davis so the it's going to be important to see which ones, it, and which team establishes the themselves. And Bruce Gerard Andrews opening the scoring for first. You know, what a great mid-range shot that was. He just snuck on the baseline, kind of mid-range. So we have two shots coming for Rashawn Davis. Three Prairie View a and Panthers right there with the rebound. He has 10 points. Jones Second free throw attempt. Trying to drive and in and get to Patterson. The line. And the lead Patterson is shows the ball and hands it Make off. That. Blackston. Correction. Two. Goes awry, and, but Prairie View and him able to secure it. With Andrews with his second rebound of the afternoon. Andrews is so active on the boards. He's moving all, he's all over the place. It's so difficult to box him out because not only is he quick, he's athletic, and he is just working hard. It's been a while since a field goal was put down by North Carolina Patterson. Central. Baseline three connects. Hits the ground, but he says, you know what? I'm feeling it this afternoon. Great ball movement by Prairie View and m to get the wide open shot in the corner. Lavelle Moten wants to talk things over. Dallas, great team defense. Still Still trapped trapped that last time. Foul on that play. Langley got yeah, and just, and and just, just a little just too aggressive on the, on the on uh, the with his defense, but Rock I love the running. energy. Why, I don't know. Ivy Smith. Hope kill you. Aggressive man to man, three quarter defense in the post, double teaming, rotation. Barrio misses the long jump. And 
Out of bounds, possession goes to Panthers. Byron, Byron Smith, Coach Smith has done a, a great job with That's coaching his defense. With um, you just saw everything Here in that possession the from the contested shot to the, the three-quarter defense in the post the area, right forcing uh, in players in the passing lanes. And hopefully going into the locker room at the break. And a miss. Smith thought he had a steal there, but he stays in possession right. with Chris. That's a tip that you got to finish. Extra Jones set out of the timeout. Coquillo once again with the rebound, and they're going to try to run it. Guavario finds Smith back to Mapoyo and back in for a nice, easy lay-in for the big man. Well, it looked easy, but he gave a ball fake, a little shot fake. He's going to move to the other side of the rim to finish that shot. It was great, great fundamentals. The G-Men finally get on and the board. 5-2 is the your score end. opening half both here in the semifinals of the Toyota Swag Men's Basketball right Semifinal from Birmingham, Alabama. Prairie View unable to score. Rivario on the break. The ball really well from the free throw line. Jay Joyner. And a nice one by Pope Hillier. 4-3 to tie it up at five. That's the free throw. Yeah, that's the way to move the ball. Grambling State did a great job with moving the ball in transition, really making it difficult for Prairie View to spot up, match up. You don't know who I am. Long three again. Well, this one does not nice connect stroke. for Grambling. Now, NBA scouts will take that into consideration as far now as the, the Panthers on the prowl again, the trying to break this five on top. And this is the young man you feel that has a chance to go at the next level at six foot nine out of Chicago, Illinois. Started his career in Kent State, and he makes one or two. And it's a four point Patterson lead. on the inside. He does not connect with the basket, but we'll have an opportunity to a shoot two. The corner, Quoting the Byron the Smith, he is the hardest, hardest worker on, on this team. Line. And they say he works hard in practice, but he doesn't get it. And that's, what you, that's how you make champions, the effort that they put in in practice. Then it comes natural in a game because you're going to bring that energy every single day. And when we come back, we'll see who can break this five all time. You're watching the Swag Men semifinal right here on ESPN. Little Red Riding Hood? Lives. Yep. And yeah, that's dark. Not cool, AT&T. 10 Meg isn't 100. Xfinity delivers the fastest, most reliable internet. Black Men's Team Basketball Tournament Championship Semi-Final for the Bill Harris Arena at the Birmingham Fallsplex. Jay Moretta along with Cynthia Cooper and Austin Chris. And right now we're all tied up at five. It is the G-Men who were regular season champions last season at Able. Make it to the postseason in ABR, but it's Prairie View who now holds that regular season title. Both of these teams vying for the Swag Tournament title and the automatic deal in the NCAA it's, it's fun to see what what happens when you know something is taken away from you and then you get it back that next year. To see the hunger and the and the energy that these players are playing with, the focus that they they play with every single game, and now they're they've come away regular season champions this year. Everyone starts at the same a and looking to get the double double, the regular season. North Carolina A and T is proud to be a leader in science, technology. Engineering to. and mathematics. He we are on the first. racing to preeminence in research, business, agriculture, and the arts. Your success matters here. You will push forward. You will achieve. And you he completes will that finish two because that's opportunity to increase the lead now to seven five. Oh, this is. It. And we're back here at the scope of Norfolk. Trying to move the ball the rather quickly. Right Checking in was Prince Moss, the 6'7 sophomore from Bethlehem, Alabama. Alabama. But it's Ivy Smith Jr. Bumper. who so takes the inside Cole, jumper the and it does not go oh, in. Furby now on the break. Particularly the to that Good defense by Gramley, but it's Furby who's able to stand tall. Blackston over to Patterson. Patterson now showing his athleticism and makes the basket with a little bit using that back as a shield to get the two easy lay-ins. Right, and you had Rambling being so aggressive defensively out at the at almost a half court line that they allowed that penetration to happen. There was nobody there to help. We love to be a part of that. We have exclusive partnerships with not only the MEAC, but also Flag, the CIAA, so all 
big they swept the regular season. We have that they basically beat so everyone I know that twice just except really Texas Southern. They split with their in-state rival. And you take part in the job fairs. And I, I love the way the action of Bird do the energy of Bird do, because they're they're moving the ball efficiently. Then that's, that's allowing them to get offensive right. rebounds on any shot. And now I've with the this, but it was current students right that are at HBCUs back. to provide them with internship top. opportunities and hopefully be placed in with our so company with this after ball graduation. Ball that you see first, you get a wide open look, and now you get the opportunity with that baseline cut for offensive board. And that's just because you're spreading the defense out with your ball movement. You're moving it from one side of the court to the next, and that gives you wide open looks. One and two, an opportunity for offensive rebound. Now these two teams are, as they say, intense football rivals. They play every year. Oh, just uh, now the officials to, trying to check uh, to see make sure no one has a cut. Like they, they saw I some blood on the floor, but no one has a cut that's in the we game right now. Ram with the possession, Prince Moss Atlanta. with the basketball, uh, the, the young man from right summer. here in the suburb so of Birmingham, Bessemer, Alabama. Now Ivy Smith. Well, that's great. A Johnson C. Smith product, an HBCU product. And look at the aggressive defense from Prairie View, again, denying the wings, fronting the post, physical in, in the post area, double teaming. And what, when you say asset, Oh, just Long dealing opportunity. with different assets, different partners. So um, I manage uh, HBCUs Bramley, all the way up from Mbui and UBS, all the way down uh, south to Johnson and Livingstone, Shaw yes. University. You know, in that um, possession there, Bramley 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 did as, as, as good a job yes. as you well, could possibly good. do, continuing to move the ball yeah. from one side of the floor to the next with the aggressive defense that Prairie View and them was playing. So glad to have you with us here. And off of Mbui's foot, and it'll be possession now for Prairie View in just a moment. Substitution now coming in, Devontae Jackson for Ramley, along with Kravon Bunch. Nah, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Patterson. University. And that one goes awry. Had a little bit too much defense coming in there for Grambling for him to get that shot off. Fourth in the nation for Grambling trying to find some rhythm offensively. We offer cutting edge technology. Nice no look pass inside, but a good steal by Prairie View. We are Patterson. First. Oh, that one goes off. Darius Williams tried to get the assist, getting it over to Patterson. But now Ivy Smith back in trying to command the Grambling State offense. Lean in, and we have a block on Patterson, and we have a player down. Prince looks like he may have bumped knees with someone, and he is down. Prince Moss, the young man from Vestmer, Alabama, he averaged 6.6 points a game, and right now that knee is hurting. Just here, a lot of congestion. I think the offensive player lost his balance a little bit. It's not just the ships, the armor, or the aircraft. It's something more. It's, it's the will to it's fight like and determination to win. Right found inside here, each and right every there. Marine that answers a nation's call. Right there. Battles yep. won. So I don't think it was knee to knee. I think he... Back here at halftime, 28-24. The score, right here and it's our halftime lead as the Eagles of North yeah, right Carolina there. Central have a four-point advantage and over the Aggies backwards of North Carolina. And see, I'm joined by... Angie Angel. Brown. Angel, I'm sorry. Like I Halo say Angel. and all that good stuff. <laughs> Angel Brown, the right Angel. And you can tell she is an Angel. Angel Brown from iHeartRadio. Yes. One of the big right there sponsors and partners sure okay. of the Mid-East and Athletic Conference. And Angel, we'll take your title is? I'm market president for iHeartMedia of, of Norfolk. 
So that means yeah. what? You watch it. That means Swipe I have the privilege of managing right four of the most yes. phenomenal radio stations here in Hampton Roads. Oh, Agency. Well, Pack with B vitamins, electrolytes, antioxidants, right? plus more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Why not feel this good every day? Emerge and see. And for its all the company in terms of delivery for entertainment, news, and Jackson to have in his arsenal as they trail 11 5 here in the opening half. Now, you know, available to all of our clients. Um, so we do three pointer for uh, Anthony Gaston, the young man from Richmond. That, you know, we are able to do that across the country over 800. And last time games. they played, he had a 30 point outbreak against Prairie View in a, a losing a partner effort. With and the there's media. a little mix so, up here you know, with two really defenders on one player down and at the block you know, and leaving him open for wide open shots. Teams that are here across the country, and so because iHeart can deliver that now message, a you know, either on our news stations or our sports stations or our, our, the, our you know, commercial uh, right music call. stations, it's really important that and we do that, and we do that here because MIAC is a staple here in Norfolk, and so because we are a staple, you know, 103 Jams has been around, you know, and it was the first um, hip-hop station on uh, on air, so because we have that, right that history here, it's important that miss. we support What's historical, and that is this assignments there. Let me ask you this: there are most of the schools in all shot. of these conferences, especially HBCUs and the MEAC in particular, have communication yeah. schools, schools yes. of journalism. How yes. has iHeart interacted with those entities to try to bring some of those students in communication? So they're double to journalism teaming, and here's the rotation. Now, someone's supposed yeah, so to really rotate out. That there's a feeder program. You know, that's as number, we get older, myself three included, and me. Um, <laughs> It's important to for us to reach the next generation. And, you know, media is such an integral part of okay. our world. Social media, you know, they were looking media, for an elbow media, on the that rebound. It's important that we reach back. So we are working yeah. with a lot of our schools locally and abroad, Player not safety, just here in Norfolk, uh, but Paramount, nationwide, to make sure that, you know, we help touch uh, those lives of children that are coming up behind us so that they can continue the legacy that we're leaving. Well, it's always a pleasure. And you have a great radio, a big, big part of this community, especially in the time we and very Patterson does a good a job to try to save it. Thank you. All right, we're at halftime here. Second half coming up on the scope and dog rope. It's the Aggies against the Eagles. Trying to go inside. I am still here. I'm a son. Where you now I'm off and running? A sister. A brother. A boyfriend. A girlfriend. Black, white. And good play by Darius Williams coming off the bench to get on the scoreboard. All of these things that I am. A great stop and pop. Great stop and pop. You didn't go too deep. Created space with the one dribble. And in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, we don't accept stereotypes. You see, there's no room for injustice and intolerance in sports. Sports do not judge. When I'm on that once again, the young man from Moravian, Idaho, the inside. able to get on the score to lead my team and outperform our opponents. Because in my conference, our diversity brings us together. And this one as easy as pie for Darius Williams. He is coming off the bench and really ignited this Prairie offense. <laughs> that was a great step back three pointer. Just rocked the defender asleep and got that shot off. It's not just the ships. The are Lock called on or the aircraft. Aircraft. It'll be a two-shot opportunity for Graham. And I think what Ivy Smith has to make sure he does is balance his game with his passing and scoring. We have a media timeout. When we come back, we'll see if Grambling can cut into this six-point lead from Prairie View and him. You're watching the Toyota Men's Swag Basketball Tournament semifinal from Birmingham, Alabama, right here on ESPN. Percent Italian. So I went on to Ancestry to learn that one of our ancestors was Mr. Junior. This is my ancestor I didn't know about. Of course. And welcome back to live coverage of the. Toyota Swag Men's Basketball Semi-Final. Let's go to the third member of our team, Arthur Chris. Uh, Thanks, James. Uh, uh, checking with the Prince Moss's condition, the sophomore game. guard for Grambling. He was running in the back, favoring his knee, his right knee a little bit, but it seems like he's doing a lot better. He's moved up on the bench, closer to the coaching staff. The trainer seemed to indicate that he was fine, and so we'll have to wait and see if he returns for more action this morning. 
takes a lot off her, and yes, he is on the bench, rolling that towel, and looks like he wants to get back into the fray, as obviously the next on the more importantly, when you look at North Carolina Central, who's real in this ball game, but that he did not get hurt, they shot he's still available for the field in the first half, and his team, and they also shot 78 from the free throw Still and with Purdy with the lead. Extra, both teams actually did an excellent job of taking care of the basketball. Only four turnovers by the Eagles, six by the Aggies. Uh, and and fouls are called away by from the, the basketball. Yeah, they didn't miss any free throws. Right. They went there six times and made all of them. Lister is called. Right. And came away with seven. They went down. And Points in the paint. Just that it was on Anthony Gaston for Brown. The there. 14 to 8 in points in the paint. So they're not relying and on And once that again, no, they were not on the Anthony Gaston is back to back foul. So he's already First fouled from the one of the reasons so get ready to start he, he's fouling because the Aggies will get putting the ball in there, they're the cutting half. so hard across the line, lane. It's forcing you to kind of body him up and be physical. The winner again goes into the championship Acrobat game tomorrow. Shot there. Does not Play go in. Tayshawn Johnson here from the scope in, in Norfolk, on Virginia. that circus-like shot that didn't go in. Once again, Prairie View with the possession. Jerry Harris and they the never give up on, on the ball. Prairie View the and them never the gives up on the ball. The ball. They the missed the shot. They missed Douglas. the rebound. Pretty but they never gave up. and ended up tying it up and getting the jump ball in possession. They were switching all the ball screens. Blackson trying to create, with the finds a hole in the defense and lays it in. Great job by Gary Blackson. Yeah, that was a great move, great use of his body to shield the defender away from the ball and allow him to lay that ball up on the glass for a bucket. 18-12. He's trying to slow the Aggies up. Now drop back into a switching man, -man, man trying to the answer. Switching all the side ball screens that the Steal by Prairie View, but Grambling able to get Third it right back. These two teams have met great hands. The season. Great hands by, by Gerard Andrews. Had to go. Great defensive play by Prairie View A&M, able to get the charge. Good job Cam by Langley. Ellis for the Panthers. And you can tell the personality of Prairie View and them right now. They take pride in their defense and they let their offense feed from the energy they create defensively. Trying to go back up on the inside. Great save there by Chancellor Ellis. And now a steal by Ivy Smith. He's going to push it. Rabario right there with the lay-in. Two-man basketball at its best for the G-man. Four-point lead for Prairie View. Shot goes long. Rabario with the rebound for Grambling State. Prairie View able to get back on defense. Ivy Smith Jr. for Grambling in there. Red and gold able to set something up. Quick release goes in and out. Blackston with the rebound for the Panthers. And you never really see a lot of players for Prairie View a and running out away from the rebound. You always see at least three players boxing out and going for that, that defensive rebound so that they can get out on their fast break. You can't go on a break without the ball. Yeah, no, I don't even know why people try, attempt to. <laughs> why do players attempt to go on a fast break without the basketball? No, I mean, just Prairie View, you know, a great defensive possession absolutely ends with the rebound. And the more play, the more you understand that, the more you get vested in grabbing that Return rebound. Prairie View, Jones, along with Ellis and Antoine Foul on Mapoyo, and this will be the second free throw for Gary Blackston. And the second one does not connect. 
five point lead for the Panthers. Good no look pass on the inside and a nice lay in by Axel McCoy. And literally the assistant coach on Prairie View's bench was standing up calling, calling the play actions out as Bramblin was running the play. Off of a Bramblin player's knee. Possession Prairie View. Going on the inside, misses the first opportunity. Grambling now on the break. The transition is when Grambling is at their best. Cabario trying to find a way to get inside or get it to Mapoyo in the post. Long three by List by Gatson goes awry and no look pass goes to. Nobody. No one. <laughs> Jones trying to be a little uh, dipsy-do-ish, and he forgot the dip and the do. <laughs> or, at least, ish. <laughs> or at least to find someone on the other end of that dipsy-do. That drives coaches crazy. Just empty possessions. Smith. Getting the double team, trying to find an open man, does, and Gaston, and Gaston connects. Anthony Gaston with his second three-pointer of the afternoon. And once again, I, I just really think Ramlin State is doing a tremendous job handling Prairie View a ms pressure. Blackston can't find a way to get in. He wants to slash and dash, but the jump is okay. <laughs> Blackston with a nice jump. Found a way. That's the key. Smith Jr. trying to find someone open. The defense for Prairie View is really hampering their opportunity to find some offensive flow. Pert unable to connect. And a foul call. Gaston again, his third personal foul. He must just be the hack man. He's what I was. <laughs> That's what, we had talked about that, right? Yeah, we talked about I was the hack guy. Every team needs one. There you go. Proud sponsors of the 2019 Sweat Basketball Championship. And it goes in and Alabama. Yeah, call it a foul. Well, you know, what I love about Preview and Emma, they continue to put the pressure on the defense. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll see if Prairie View can hold on to this early lead. You're watching ESPN Swag Basketball. They're at NorthwesternMutual.com. Welcome back to live coverage of the 2019 Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament Semifinal. James Red, along with Cynthia Cooper and Arthur Trish, and it is 21-19 in favor of the regular season champions with 17-1 Purdue and m Panthers over the Grambling State Tigers. And right now, we're trying to see if we can find a little bit more separation. Right now, it's been a four or five point game for the entire first half. And it's been a very balanced game for both teams. They both came out ready to play. Grambling State withstanding the pressure from Prairie View A&M and Prairie View A&M keeping the pressure on, creating opportunities to get out on a fast break, and they've secured those rebounds. But it's been a very evenly matched game so far. Blackston. And he misses the second one, and here he is, Prince Moss, making his return to the lineup after leaving with an injury. Doesn't seem to be favoring that knee much. Barrio trying to find 
someone open. Find Smith. Blackson doing a good job keeping him at bay. But that nice jumper overcomes the good defense. Good job by Ivan Smith Jr. Well, uh, again, the great mid-range shot. So you get past your player, but you don't go deep enough to get the defensive rotation in, involved in your in your shot. So great mid-range shot for Ivy. Mario once again at the point. Nice hit and unable to connect is Ivy Smith. Patterson gets it back over as Prairie View now trying to hold on to just a one point lead. Friendly foul charge number one, Ivy Smith Jr. This first personal eight foul. Ellis now shooting two for Prairie. And connects on the first. This is the closest Grambling has been since the start of the basketball game, but unable to regain that lead. And, and Gramlin has just stayed the course. I mean, Prairie View has pretty much thrown everything at them from great offensive rebound and attacking the basket to aggressive presses, not just full court, but also aggressive man-to-man -man in the half court. And, and Gramlin State has, has demonstrated a lot of poise. Lister call for the foul on Ivy Smith. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Prince Moss trying to get it to Pert and Pert unable to do it. Gary Blackston right there to swat it away in the mismatch. It's funny because I saw. Uh, post players are always underneath the basket, like Pert, and they're waving their hands. Hey, I'm open. Hey, I'm open. Well, you know, there's a defender on me, and uh, <laughs> you're not you're not as open as you seem. Smith, less than 10 seconds on the shot clock, trying to create, and foul called offensive on Smith. That's great defense. That's great defense by, by Dennis Johnson. Dennis Jones, excuse me. He anticipated Ivy's movement and, and, and was there for, for the, you know, to take the charge. Coach says that Dennis is, has great anticipation. He doesn't look like a great defender, but he always beats the man to the spot, and he did that right there in that play. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and Ivy Smith, he does it. He's so quick. His movements, when he goes, he goes so hard, so it was really hard for him to avoid that charge. Lister on the miss for Prairie View. Ribeiro, he also gets a miss. And now that was Williams with the rebound, gets it over to Jones. And we have a travel. Just a little, in, in, in a bit of a hurry, Darius was. Bit of a hurry. Get that, you know, his teammates are like, just shoot it. Right, right. You just got to shoot. Moss. Ivy Smith does a good job of getting the rebound and kicking it back out to an open man, but they are unable to connect. Rivario now getting a lot of pressure on by Darius Williams. Chris Moss, nice move on the baseline, but still unable to connect Darius Williams with another rebound. That's a great jab step to clear your, give yourself a lane for that basket to get your shot off. Hurt with the block. And they'll say it was out of bounds. They were looking for a foul, but Prairie View retains possession.
Prince Moss able to secure the basketball. Right now, we've had both teams get a number of opportunities, but no one able to seal the deal and get a point. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at it. They're getting the shots they want. Both teams are getting the shots they want. They're just not finishing them. Perk. And looks like that one clumsily goes out of bounds. And Perk may have been saved on that one. 332. <laughs> yeah, 332 left to play here in the first half. 23 21 is your score. When we come back, we'll see if Grambling can come back or if Prairie View can hold on. You're watching men's semifinal of the Swag Basketball Tournament presented by Toyota right here on ESPN. Of them. Farm Ridge, it's real life good. Welcome back to live action here at the Bill Harris Arena in Birmingham, Alabama. Second game of the afternoon session. First men's semifinal. 23-21 is your score with the regular season champion Prairie View, the number one seed, with a two-point lead over Grambling State. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Tigers. Out of bounds, ball. Yeah, I think uh, I think a he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds was Grambling's player Prince Moss, and just trying to get himself reacclimated. He left with looked like a knee injury, but he is back. Stepped on the line. Nice steal there by Ivy Smith. Gets it over back to Prince Moss. Moss trying to find someone open. And they will call a charge. Great defense by Prairie and m You know, in that situation, if you try to jump up right here, he's just trying to figure something out. Three defenders, now four defenders in the lane to contest this shot. You have got to maintain body control and get that ball out of there. You know, Moss maybe maybe set him up a little bit with that interior pass. And back and forth we go. No one wants to score so far in this latter half of the first half. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to finish. That was a great jump shot taken by Darius Williams. Great offensive rebound, but you've got to finish shots. The Barrio trying to find someone. And away from the basketball, there is a foul call on Darius Williams. Check that, it'll be on Patterson. And Byron Smith is pleading his case. Second full season as head coach for the Purdue a &M Panthers. James, I wonder here, if whichever team gets a bucket, they may go on a run because Prairie View has missed his last six shots while Grambling has missed their last five shots. Timeout is called. Seems like the frustration level is heating, hitting a fever pitch, Arthur, because both teams are trying their best. Well, both teams are trying their best, but you also have to be efficient. You know, you got, we've already talked about Prairie View and M's defense and how stifling it is, and you've demonstrated it there, but you got to score buckets. Right now, neither team has been able to connect. Quick timeout call by Campbell to try to set up something just to get the ball in bounds. Right, and one team is shooting, I think, uh, it's Gremlin State is shooting 34%. Prairie View a and is shooting 30% right now. 22 from the three-point line. Someone has to pick their focus up because I think the intensity is there. They've just got to dial in. Dallas Pope Hilliard will now inbound, gets it to Ivy Smith.
The Barrio trying to find some room on the inside and count the basket and one more. Gary Blackman can't believe it. Rebario able to do his due. Nigel with the two and an opportunity for three. This is a great shot. Where does keep your keep your focus? The focus I was talking about earlier. But it, it, if you can make that sh shot, let's make wide open three point shots. Let's make wide open layups. 2:41 left. All tied up. We haven't been tied up since we started the ball game. Check that. Up one is Graham. Dante Jackson, the head coach for Grambling State, trying to urge his team on. Yeah, the passing for Purview a and in this second, the latter part of the second, first half, has been a little off. Offensive foul. Jones looks like he could have showed the lean in rather than just trying to go after it. And early in this first half, Purdue was make they were making an extra pass. They were in a better offensive rhythm, and they've gotten away from that, and now they're struggling offensively. Barrio to inbound. Smith gets it back to Rivario. Two minute mark. Grambling with the lead, trying to extend it, and that one goes awry, but Smith <laughs> trying to crash in on it. Fairview on the break, unable to control it, and will now set up, try to get an offensive bucket. Blackston. Over to Patterson, who's trying to find his way in the paint, and does, and connects, and regains the lead by one. Gave up a wide open three point shot to get closer, and he paid off. Panthers up by one over Grambling State. Tigers looking to try to do something and out of bounds. Out of bounds. Seems as though that far side baseline has been giving Grambling problems. They can't get their feet set anywhere on it. I mean, you've got to know where you are on the court. If you're, if you're right there on that baseline, you've got to know how close you are and how much space you have. I don't think I ever stepped out of bounds when I played. You never stepped out coming. Yeah, that's just not one of my turnovers. <laughs> Patterson. Able to use great body control to get a foul called on Prince Moss, and it'll be Patterson to shoot two. It's almost like Patterson has taken over this, this time of the game where Prairie View is really, uh, have been struggling to score. Hurt comes in for Grambling and for Prairie View. Antoine Lister coming in. 51 seconds left, two point lead for the Panthers. He connects on the second. Three point ball game for Prairie View. Trying to find a wide open man, less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. Still 30 on the play on the game clock. Smith trying to find Pert. 
And Pert go, goes way over the rim. Once again, he gets closer, but still no cigar. And now on the break is Prairie View. Less than 10 seconds to play. Rivario with the ball, trying to find it, and looks like it was off the foot of a Prairie View player, and it will be Prairie View possession. So I'm shaking my head right now because I've just seen a plethora of missed opportunities right now by both teams. You have a fast break. You can take one shot. You can take the last shot of the half if you're a Prairie View, but you force a shot in transition, and then if you're grambling, you're hitting it off your feet off uh, out of bounds. I mean, you really have to show some discipline late in this second half. Only two oh, first seconds. half, sorry. Trying to get a half-court shot. Oh, close, but no control. In sight. This is it, but right now they have the 27 to 24 is your score. And off the trish, we'll have head coach Byron Smith, who is coming into the locker room with the lead. Author? Here with Coach Byron Smith. Coach, your team takes a three-point lead into the half. You know, it worked well for the first half. I thought we defended Ivy Smith really well. He didn't break our defense down, but he didn't want really to score a whole lot. Uh, we got out on the shooters. I thought we did a decent job on the glass. So, uh, Grandma's a tough team. Please with the three-point lead in half. What are you looking to do with your offense in the second half? We got to get out and get in transition a little bit more. I think we put too much pressure on our half-court offense. We're not getting out enough. We're a pretty athletic team, and we're really well in transition. So, we got to get out and get some transition buckets in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Okay. Back thank you, James. Thank you, Arthur. 27-24 is your halftime score. We come back. We'll have more halftime entertainment right here on ESPN. From Bill Harris Arena, Prairie and m with a 27-24 lead over Grambling State. We are honored to have the head athletic G-man. Rusty Ponton has joined us, the athletic director. Appreciate it, Bill. Yes, and you were named athletic director just recently. Huh? January 2nd. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, late you, Christmas sir. gift, huh? Late Christmas gift, yes, yes. Now, a lot of people don't know you're technically. A oh, South it, here we go, <laughs> here we go. You're technically a Southern Jaguar. I, I graduated from Southern University, mm -hmm. played at Southern University, um, had a great, you know, great career at Southern University. <laughs> And I've been at Grambling now for 30 years. It's 30? 30 years. 30 years I've been so at Grambling. I don't think we can bring that up anymore. <laughs> you know, that's basically what Rusty's saying. Like, I don't think you can technically bring that up anymore because I've been to, at Grambling State for 30 years. I got you. You know, what, you know what's funny about that, too, when I, when I was inducted into the Swag Hall of Fame, right, I told the guys who were out there on the field with me, I said, watch this now. You will never hear this many Grambling fans cheer for something for Southern ever again in life. That's right. So when they announced it, say from Southern University, basketball, Rusty Ponton, they were like, they clapped and said, yeah, 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 but wait a minute, he's from Grambling. He's, he's with us. He's with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have two teams already in the tournament. Unfortunately, your women did not yes, make yes. it to the final. How important is it to resurrect the storied history of Grambling basketball? Because a lot of people outside looking in, they only know Willis Reed. They don't know necessarily about Larry Wright and all the other Grambling legends that you have. I mean, you know, when you start talking about some of these individuals, the Aaron James and the Larry Wrights, who have gone on to the NBAs and that kind of thing like that, and the and the record that Coach Hopley had. You know, Coach Hopkins, my coach, was a Hall of Famer. He led the state in scoring and rebounding. So when you go back and you start and you see how, how well Coach Jackson and Coach Murray are having these young, young ladies and young men play, it's phenomenal. I mean, you know, I'm sitting next to greatness right now, and we, we, we tell our kids all the time, you can be whatever you want to be if you put it to work, if you put the work in. Listen to your coaches. Be good people. Do what we tell you to do. You're going to be fine. So we, we try to keep emphasizing the fact you're going to be good students. You're going to be good stewards. You're going to be good players on and off the court. Do you think timing is everything? You are a former head basketball coach at Grambling State. You were an athletic administrator, university administrator. Do you think that time as far as going through your matriculation to the athletic director spot has prepared you for it? I guess so. I, you know, I've been in, in, in up administration, uh, athletic, I mean, not athletic, well, student affairs administration for 10 years. And the issues that you deal with our students in a general sense, or the issues that I say my student athletes, it's just condensed down to a smaller group. 
So I think that everything that I've gone through since I've been, and I, I love the institution. You know, I love where I came from. I love where I met. And I love the fact that I get a chance to uh, infect students at this level and they, and they can see that, hey, we can be good students. You know, we can be, we can play good basketball or good football or good baseball and we can succeed. So I, 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 it's like throwing a fish back in water. You know, I was in athletics for over 20 years, got a chance to coach against, play with, see these individuals play. I actually was on the USA team when, uh, with, with the USA team and sent them to play with played you guys over in, uh, in Hawaii. That just shows how old I am. Uh, <laughs> That's why he said that. I just want I want our viewing public to know. That's, but you that's, were playing. That's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I I know you with your history in basketball. Can you dissect that first half for Grambling State? What do what does Grambling have to do here in the second half in order to come away with the victory? Well, I, I think our kids are playing solid. You know, when you start looking at closing out, playing good defense, we haven't given Prairie View the open threes that we did in the first two games that we played against them. So they're challenging them out on the floor. we got to continue to do that. we got to rebound better, and we got our big guys got to make buckets around them, make shots around the Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, we, we talked about finishing around the basket. We talked about I, – I, I was very impressed with how Grambling State – handled Prairie View A&M's pressure, right. both full court and in the half court. Right, I mean, and that was a problem for us before. We threw the ball away. We're taking care of the ball better this half in this game right now, and but we got, like you said, we got to make we got to make buckets around the uh, shots around the bucket. I mean, we if we don't do that, it won't be good. It won't be good for because Prairie View, Prairie View is a tough team. I mean, yeah. what, whether they have one loss this year in the conference, one Two loss, loss. One, and, loss. one loss, and then one there's loss. this whole idea that you got to score in order to win a game. No, 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 no. If I if you can't <laughs> score, you can't win. <laughs> if I keep you from scoring, <laughs> you won't win. There it is. <laughs> Wow, Coach, thank you so very no, much. No, thank you, guys. I appreciate them. it. And thank you guys for what you do for the conference and, and all of the history you bring back to us and just the expertise and the professionalism. We love you guys. We appreciate you. You're so welcome. Congratulations again. Thank you, guys. All thank right, you. Rusty Ponton, the athletic director for Grambling State University. When we come back, we'll have more halftime right here on ESPN. You are home. Introducing a better batch of beer batter from CPAC and Budweiser. From Bill Harris Arena, the Toyota Squash Men's Basketball Tournament Semifinals. They led along with Cynthia Cooper. And Cynthia, it appears that Grambling has been aggressive, but not aggressive enough. Well, Grambling has, has done a great job with withstanding Purvey's pressure, but Grambling has to finish around the basket. You've got to finish some of those chippies. You've got to knock down some of those shots. Get in the offensive rhythm. And when you look at Prairie View, they've been doing a good job, but overall, when you look at turnovers, six turnovers have been rather costly because it's turned into eight points for Grambling. Well, I think Prairie View is doing a great job with creating turnovers, and now they have to do the same thing with Grambling. Now you've got to finish those shots around the basket. As Coach said, you're putting way too much pressure on your half-court offense. Get out in transition, get some easy looks. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll have a little bit more second half action right here on ESPN. Welcome back to live action at the Bill Harris Arena. James Red along with Cynthia Cooper and Arthur Trish. 27-24 is your score with Prairie View with the lead. Grambling with the basketball. Hurt on the inside. Rebario trying to find Ivy Smith. Can't get it over this stifling defense of Prairie View. Finally does with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Long three-pointer. Does not connect and Pert. He said knee. He had his hand, his body, his <laughs> knee, his ankle. And he said me? Yeah. Yeah, you. You know what? That was a great first defensive possession for, for Prairie View. Panthers trying to expand off the three-point halftime lead. Long three-point try is short by Jones. Perk with the rebound. Ivy Smith trying to find Hilliard. 
Polk Hilliard unable to connect. Nice long pass, but good block by Polk Hilliard. Dallas Polk Hilliard showing his defensive prowess. Yeah, I know Devontae would want to have that one back and be able to go up strong on that next time on that next shot. But you know, in transition, once Coach said that that that, that was the adjustment they were going to try to make and get some something done in transition. Mapoyo with the putback, and now it's a one-point game in favor of Prairie View. They've come out a little flat. Come out a little flat, and you know you're not you're walking the ball up the floor. You relying on your half-court offense. I mean, you have the defense and in, defensive intensity now you got to bring that intensity to offense Gary Blackston with the three-pointer he looks at coach and says that's what you wanted yeah that's <laughs> what I wanted and give me more and more <laughs> four-point game now for the Panthers the burial trying to find someone hoping Polk Hilliard with a high, did not get any glass, and Patterson right there with the rebound over to Blackston. And good deflection there by Ivy Smith to stop the momentum of Prairie View. Yeah, and once again, you know, Prairie View is making a, a, a concerted effort here in the second half to get out and run, get some easier looks at the basket. Prairie View basketball. Barrio does get the ball, but he was out of bounds once he had possession. Yeah, he slid into third base. <laughs> Head first. Spring is a wonderful time in college. You have so many different sports that are going on between softball, baseball, indoor, outdoor track, basketball, golf. You name it, they have a lot of sports out there. Just go to your neighborhood university and, <laughs> as they say, dive in. <laughs> and this one just goes awry a little bit too much for Dennis Jones, and it just got away from him. It never ceases to amaze me how right here, when you're dribbling, you get a little out of control. The, you lose control of the ball, and then you like, you're looking at the official like, <laughs> bail me out. Long jumper by Mapoyo, no good, and Blackson trying to push the offense for Prairie View. Jones, that one does not go, and he gets the ball back after a double deflection. Jones aggressive to the basketball. Dennis Jones finally able to connect here in the second half. And he still wasn't happy. No. Still complaining. He's looking for somebody to help him on that ball he just left somewhere out there. Jones doing a good job defensively, but Pope Hilliard able to connect. Yeah, nice. Little, he had a lot of patience. Pope Hilliard on that shot had a lot of patience. Patterson. And he is fouled. Gets right back up, bounces back, able to have a two shot opportunity at the free throw line. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I like Devontae getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line, keeping the pressure on, on that Grambling State defense. Connects on the first. And got a little wet spot on the floor here at Bill Harris Arena. Second game of the first session. Second session will start tonight at 6 p.m. Connects on the second. 34-28 is your score. Smith able to break the pressure along with Gaston. Gaston nursing three fouls, so he doesn't want to be overly aggressive. That, I, that pressure took 
15, 16 seconds off the shot clock. So that now, if you're a player, you, you only have to play 15, 16 seconds of defense. Timeout on the court. 34-28 is your score. Prairie View extending their lead. You're watching Swank Men's Basketball Semifinal on ESPN. Shave, trim, and style in one stroke. Braun, designed for what matters. Welcome back to live coverage of the Swank Men's Basketball Tournament Semifinal presented by Toyota. James Red, along with Cynthia Cooper and Arthur Trish. 16 minutes left to play in this game, and it is Prairie with a 34-28 lead. Both teams playing strong defense. Offensively, it's been Prairie that has been able to connect a little bit more than Graham. Yeah, both teams still shooting in the low 30s for, for this game. The team that to overcome it and really start to finish around the basket will come away with the victory here. And we're ready to start. Everybody was a little bit trying to jump the gun before the officials to start that one. Gadsden trying to go inside, and he does get the foul. Andrus is like, wait a minute, what was that? Yeah, I mean, you look at this action right here, and really he creates this. He's just He just loses his balance right here, trying to create and find a, 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 a lane to the basket. I think Dwayne Wade made that famous, huh? He just finds a way. <laughs> I can't shoot it. I'm just going to go to the line. Yeah. Yeah. Smith, nice move. Pull back jumper and connects. Ivy Smith, the young man from Tacoma, Washington, Rainier High School, all conference first team. Patterson, and he traveled. Once again, trying to create something where there's nothing, and you and you end up traveling. You've got to move that ball from one side of the floor to the next. Smith, trying to go for two in a row. Ball gets away. Rebound Blackston. Blackston over to Jones. Check that Ellis. Hurt with the rebound. Smith trying to do something. Slipped a little bit right there at midcourt. Trying to set the pick is Pert. Gets it back. Nice put back. And the biggest man on the court shows his stuff. Able to connect for two. Now it's a two-point game. Prairie View still holding on to the lead. Yeah, it seems like Prairie View has fallen asleep offensively, have no offensive intensity. Blackston trying to create and pulls back on Gadsden, and they will call a foul. And that will be Gadsden's four. I mean, there's no real reason to be so aggressive on this when you already have three fouls. That's a foul. Is that point where film study comes in, where you know where a player's hot spot is, and if that's not his hot spot, you want to lay off just a little? Well, no. I, I think when, you have, when you're in foul trouble and you're important for your team, it's important for you to be on the floor, I think you've got to make sure that you say a safe distance until the game is on the line. But there's still 14 minutes to play here in the second half, and you've got to be on the floor. 
able connect, to connect on that second free throw. Prince Moss in for Grambling. Ivy Smith breaks the press. Looking for per Patterson right there to bat it away. And now going back and the fast break of the Panthers connect. Iwin Ellis with the dunk. Yeah, and the coaching staff on the Prairie View bench is saying get back, get back, and get into our defense. And Prairie View's defense prowess shows once again. A great fast break. Move the ball, pass the ball up. Players are running the floor, get rewarded. When you run the floor, you get rewarded. And then here's the charge. Boom, he's set. Outside the arc. Two great plays for, Pra for Prairie View. Inside, spin move, Patterson, and yeah, he yes. Traveled. He was dancing. Well, I, I tell you, it, it, just a simple up and under would have sufficed. Just a simple up and under move. You already had the defensive play right here, up and under. He's leaning. Just go up and under. Byron Smith trying to do his best to advocate for Patterson, but obviously that was. Yeah, I mean, it was traveling, but I don't know that I would have called traveling. If I, if I saw a player leaning on him like the Grandma State player was. And a foul call on Trevon Bunch. Prairie View and him has the basketball. Bunch had the ball, got away from him, and then he fouled to try to keep the Prairie View man from getting the basketball. Right, he's trying to make his moves, and boom, he gets double teamed. you got to pick that ball up. you got to pick it up. If he picks it up, nobody can touch him. He's seven feet tall. That's it. Just pick it up. <laughs> Blackston. He kind of caught you off guard. Just pick the ball up. Pass it out. Foul called on Prince Moss. Moss is like, wow. But he, he was moving. Official score wanted to make sure it was on Prince Moss. And connection. Chancellor Ellis with a three-point bucket. And just like that, it's an eight-point game when you start actually finishing shots. Polk Hilliard connects with a three. Now both teams are trying to connect offensively. Jones finds Patterson. He's double teamed, finds a way down the baseline, and they will call a foul. And he'll shoot two. Patterson so far 11 points doing a lot of it from the mid-range shot only his third opportunity to shoot a free throw today yeah Patterson has been doing a fantastic job really his line right now is so balanced from free throws to three-point attempts to get to the free throw, you know get rebounds and he, he's played 27 minutes I don't know if he's he's gotten a rest yet but uh, I, I like his energy Darius Williams for Prairie View call with the hold Bunch trying to find Smith and does. Moss from the baseline connects for a three-pointer. And now he looks like, now Moss looks like he's back in his rhythm. Got a little bounce to his step.
Fairview trying to answer. Jones, it goes off, and good rebound there by Mapoyo. And now Rabario on the break finds Ivy Smith Jr. Nice gimme on the baseline. And now it's a two-point game for Prairie View. And Dante Jackson is saying, yeah, my guys know what to do. Let's tighten up the defense. Exactly. You know, and that's really what has happened for, for Grambling. I mean, a couple miscues by Prairie View AM. And once again, you've got to finish shots. Patterson right now works through a double team and gets it into the paint but does not finish the shot. Bunch able to get the rebound and a foul is called on Patterson. And that one shouldn't have happened because he had already lost that battle. Yeah, I mean, you already have the rebound right here. Boom. Now he has the ball. He clearly has the ball. Now just, just go get, get, get back. back. <laughs> just get back on defense. When we come back, we'll see if Prairie View can hold on to their two-point lead or if Grambling can burst through and gain the lead again. You're watching Swag Men's Basketball presented by Toyota right here on ESPN. Advil is relief that's fast, strength that lasts. You'll ask, what pain? With Advil. And you see Grambling State breaking their huddle. They have been able to be down by as many as eight and now cut the lead down to two. James Red, along with Cynthia Cooper and Arthur Trish right here at the Bill Harris Arena, Birmingham Crossplex for the Toyota SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament Semifinal. The reigning regular season champion, Prairie View A&M, 17-1 during the regular season, going up against the four seed Grambling State. Trying to make it three in a row if they beat them twice during the regular season. But Prairie View right now having a little trouble with the G-Men. And having a lot of trouble finishing shots. And Bunch able to use his size. And he helps the man up. Good sportsmanship there, Travis Bunch. Ivy Smith. And he says, you know what? Helping him up. That keeps him from playing defense. <laughs> Ivy Smith Jr. right there, and we're all tied up at 42. Now, that's something I've never seen in a semifinal game. Hey, yeah. I'm going to help you up. <laughs> I'm going to help you up and trail the play with you. <laughs> Just to make sure you don't help stop my guy. <laughs> so I know where you are at all times. There you go. Patterson. And he has gone cold. He was hot for a while, but he's gone cold, missing three consecutive shots. Grambling trying to get the lead. Ivy Smith using his high energy. The Tacoma native. Nice long one. Mapoyo. Axel Mapoyo with the three-pointer. And now Grambling State with a 45-42 lead. Prairie View trying to find an answer. Patterson with an acrobatic shot. And we have a player down. Shoe has been lost. And Patterson is saying, wait a minute, what happened? And Patterson is forcing the issue on offense. You know, you, you got to love this aggressiveness, but you've got to go on balance. On balance. Go on balance. You kiss it off the glass. You get the contact. And one. And you keep your shoe on. Right here. Go straight up. You try to go. He's trying to go around the player. Just go straight up. I'm not going to talk about his socks. That's okay. Yeah, we won't even mention the Ma socks. Mama said always have clean socks and clean underwear. Yeah, I mean, if you're just going to lose a shoe <laughs> on television. <laughs> you got to have clean socks. As, you know, that's just what mom used to say. Right here, wide open for a shot, doesn't take it, goes right by the defender, and here's the gap right there in the middle. Yeah. Now, he tried to cut chop bunch in half with a karate kick. <laughs> Patterson shooting two. And 
And he does connect on the first. And Bunch did a good job for Grambling, and now it'll be Pert, the other big man, coming in to spell Trevor, Trevor Bunch. Yeah, I, I really love what Bunch did while he was in the game. Connecting on to one-point game now in favor of the G-men of Grambling State. Smith trying to fend off Williams. He gets to the rim but does not finish. And I haven't seen Smith take many bad shots, but I thought that was a, a shot that he forced. And that one was flying high in the air was Dennis Jones. But, you know, when you fly high on wood, you're going to hit something. Once again, we got to talk about balance. So you, you get here. This is, I think, a forced shot. There's nothing there. Get a rebound. Now you're off to the races, right? Because coach wants to push the ball. He wants to push a fast break. You have a left lane. You have a right lane. And then you go through four people and eat it. And, yeah, and that's what happens when you're forcing shots. I think something, James, I think on these last two possessions, we've seen Prairie View get out of control on their attempts to the basket. If they would just settle down a little bit, maybe they'd be able to get in a nice set and get something going on offense. Well, you know, I, Coach mentioned at half that he wanted his team to push the ball, and I see the concerted effort to do that. But as you mentioned, you've got to do whatever you're doing offensively under control. I think that's the key. Misses the second one. All tied up now at 45. Smith. Tries to get a foul call. Nothing was called. Darius Williams does a good job on defense. Now Jones. And looks like that hip is just fine. Dennis Jones able to get the lay-in and the lead 47-45 in favor of the Panthers. Well, yeah, now you're not trying to be dramatic. You're not trying to, you know, flop. You're just going in with a strong offensive move. Hurt. Nice hook. Oh, and it rims out. I like Perk. That's great hands, great passer. Darius connects on three. Darius Williams with the three-pointer, his second of the afternoon. And now they've extended the lead to five timeout call. That's great pass by Jones here, cross court. He reads the defender, and the result is a wide-open three-point shot in the corner. Zipped it right on the money. That's what shooters want. Shooters want that ball right in the pocket. Monday's Spring Fever sales event. The longer you look, the more there is to like. Now, get up to $2,000 in total savings on the 2019 Tucson. Hurry, event ends soon. Welcome back to live coverage of SWAC Men's Basketball, the Toyota SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament Semifinal. Grambling State Trail, regular season champion, Prairie View a and 50 to 45 James Red along with Cynthia Cooper, and we have seen Gramlin fight back down by as many as eight to gain the lead, but we've seen Prairie View now have a run and now extend their lead out to five points. Yeah, this has been a very back-and-forth competitive game. Smith. Williams has done a good job of trying his best to contain the all swag guard, Prince Moss, from long distance. And it goes off a Prairie View player and possession for Gramlin. Rebound with two hands. <laughs> and you see Coach, it's all the way at the half court saying the same thing I just said. Grab <laughs> with two hands. 
Yeah, one hand can't cut it when you're dealing with a basketball. Timeout on the court, and when we come back, we'll see in the last seven minutes and 53 seconds, can Prairie View hold on and make it to the SWAC final right here on ESPN. We're looking at the huddle of Grambling State. You see Prince Moss, young man from Bessemer, Alabama, as Dante Jackson is trying to do his best to draw up something to help his team come back from a five-point deficit. They did have the lead for a short moment in the second half, but right now it has been all Prairie View a and Yeah, you know, you, you look at what has happened over the last – a minute and 32 seconds, and Prairie View has gone on an 8 0 run. And we're ready to start with Grambling's Ivy Smith Jr. inbounding. Barrio trying to find something in the lane. He can't. Trying to hold on to the basketball. Waves of Panthers trying to swat it away. Prince Moss, and it's good. The young man from Bessemer with another three-pointer. Yeah, Moss wanted that ball in the corner. He was waiting, and he, he nailed it. Two-point game. PV. Williams. And it goes. Good job on the baseline by Darius Williams. Great patience. Two shot fakes and a mid-range bucket. Barrio trying to find someone open. Mapoyo quietly has been putting together a 13-point game. Make that 11. 13 This is, this is framing up to be a game of execution here in this half court and decision making. Bunch right there in the post. And great job by Andrus to get over the seven footer. Four point game now for the Panthers. Winner moves to the final. Yeah, the team that gets some stops. Moss again from the baseline. Oh, that one in and out, but he gets the foul, and it looks like he'll be shooting three. He yeah. has been deadly from that corner here in the second half. I think somebody needs to slap him on the knee more often in the first half. Well, I'll tell you, you've got to give, the rule is you've got to give shooters space to come down. And that did not happen here. As you see, his foot comes underneath the shooter. Right here, you've got to give him space to come down. Connects on the first. Misses the second. Ellis enters the game. Prairie puts more size on the floor. And now we have a three-point ball game. 54-52 in favor of Prairie View. Check that two-point game. Williams, long shot, rims in and out. Good athletic save by Patterson, but right into the arms of Bunch. Yeah, just drama. It's just too much. So you can't, okay, so here's a rule. Just, just for anybody who plays basketball, you can't dive on the player when they're on the floor. <laughs> okay, FYI. Right here, he loses control. He's on the ground. Boom, you can't do that. Basketball one-on-one. -on -one. 
They're going to call a foul every time. Every time. In a two-point basketball game. Less than 10 seconds on the shot clock, and Smith turns it over. Jones turns it over. Riperio right there. And it'll still be Prairie View Ball. Good defensive stop. But right out of bounds, that heel was right there. And just great hands defensively to stop a layup. Bunch is out, hurt is in. And really the team that demonstrates a little bit of poise, I think, right here in this in this time frame of the, of the game will come away with that victory. Just a little. And Patterson will go to the line to shoot two. And foul is called on Mapoyo. I think Patterson has played every minute of this game at a very high level and high intensity level. And I think now he's a, he might be demonstrating a little bit of fatigue. Stays perfect from the free throw line. 11 of 11 today for Patterson. Great job by Devontae Patterson showing his level of focus. 12 for 12 so far from the line. I mean, there's a free throw disparity, a huge free throw disparity. 17 to 22 for Prairie View and only 5 of 6 for Grambling. Hurt. Great hands, big fella. Pulls it back to a two-point game. Patterson shoots a three and connects. Devontae Patterson starting to take over. Don't get a technical foul. Great shot. Moss trying to answer. Prince Moss is fouled and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul called on Andrus. That'll be his second foul. And Moss connects on the first. That's his ninth point of the game. He had to leave the game because he had a knee issue in the first half. Scary moment. Looked like he bent it back, twisted it, or whatever. But he's been able to come back in the second half and really be a, a lightning bolt for this Grambling team. Absolutely. He's really been he, he, he's been that energizer. He's knocked down big shots. He's defended. Great second half by Moss. This is the second and four-point game now for Prairie View. Grambling State is here in a 3-2 zone. You really got to communicate in these types of odd number zones. And great athletic move by Jones, able to get through the defense and score. Dennis Jones with another two. Ivy, oh, it just goes off the rim. And great mm -hmm. box out by Jones. Boxing out Pert, the big fella. Less than four minutes to play. Patterson 
Gets it up to Williams, and a foul is called on Gramlin. Timeout on the court. 61-55 is your score. Can Prairie View close it out, or does Grambling have one more huge run between the two? You're watching SWAT Men's Basketball presented by Toyota right here on ESPN. Fresh beef, nuggets, fries, and a drink for just five bucks. Wendy's Biggie Bag is everything you ever wanted. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 2019 SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament Semifinal presented by Toyota. 61-55 is your score with 318 left to play in regulation. This game has gone back and forth, particularly in the second half with both teams having the lead for a time. But now it's where you try to extend and close out. Both teams are shooting a better percentage here in the second half with first half hovering right about 30 percent and now Prairie View is shooting 52 percent and Grambling 48. You need to reduce it to go back to 727 for the two or three. 727. I gave you the two. Let's try to go to 727 if you guys can bring that up on y'all. We can look at it again. You can't see it over there? We're looking to bring up 727 part mark in the game to check and see if it was a two-pointer or a three-pointer. 727. Yep. Can't get back to that. Yeah, you can't get back to that. All right, so they're going to they're gonna call it a two at the 727 mark. And score will remain 61-54. And Williams connects on the first. And he connects on the second to extend the lead now to nine. Largest lead of the afternoon for Prairie View. Ivy Smith. And he will shoot two. And Jones is like, no, it couldn't happen, not me. Well, I don't know. I I, I kind of I, I agree with Jones here. This is great defense here. Boom! You go straight up. It's after the shot anyway. Smith Jr. connects on the first. I also think it's very important for Jones. This is a crucial moment of the game. You can't get. You, you know, you've got to stay focused. You, you, you can't get your mind all wrapped up in things you can't change. Grambling, pressing. Patterson now back to Jones. They're trying to grind the clock out just a little. Jones and trying to make a huge dunk was Andrus. And he'll go to the line and shoot two. And that penetration forced the defense to rotate. And that's why Andrus had an opportunity to get this to get an offensive rebound and put back. And he connects on the first. Andrews, that's his first free throw opportunity of the afternoon. And for 
Prairie View, that's their 25th, as opposed to for Grambling, only 10. Make that 26. Now, once again, a nine-point game for the Panthers. Grambling, time is not on their side. Less than three minutes to play. Slip and fall by Ivy Smith, Jr. And it'll be Prairie View basketball. And once again, just trying to do too much. There's just nowhere to go here in this penetration. Prairie View is doing a great job. They got there. Now just pick it up and kick it out. Here slips on the... I guess he was trying to reverse. Travel. Exactly. Where was where was he going? Where, where are you going? He was going for a late lunch. He totally he totally committed on that play before he had any idea where to go. Well, I, I agree with you, Cynthia. He needed to get the ball, be sure of himself, and look for an open man. But he was ready to run as soon as he tried to grab it. You're on the sideline. There's already an added defender being on the sideline. So you really have to be cognizant of where you are. And you know that there's only two minutes to go, two and a half minutes to go in this game. And Grambling State is going to bring pressure. Rivero. Ivy Smith loses the basketball. And Darius Williams is called with the reach in. So a team like Grambling State here in this last three, four minutes have had struggle, has been struggling to score in the half court. And now you put them on the free throw line. And here's the most important thing about all of that. The clock really isn't moving. <laughs> four seconds. They've had two attempts in four seconds. And now they're at the free throw line. Just got to play smarter basketball if you're Prairie View a &M. And Ivy Smith connects on the second. 65-58. And a steal by Prince Moss. And he goes up for a slam, but is fouled. Johnson right there to make sure that he does not get that dunk. And right here, but in, in, in his defense, all of the Prairie View players are running away from the ball right now. You have got to, you know, Johnson is trying to bring it up against pressure, and all of the Prairie View players are running away behind the defender, talking about, I'm open. Sure you're open, because I'm defended <laughs> by three people. you got to get the ball up the court in order to have an opportunity. Yeah, all he would have had to do is dribble to one side, drag the defense over there, and then pass the ball back, and they would have had a clear lane to penetrate. But all of the players, all of his teammates were on the other side of the defense. Of, of the defense. Fairview has possession again. Blackston able to get it back over to Williams, and now they're going to slow it down. Dennis Jones trying to hold on. Two minutes left to play. Gram, Grambling trailing 65-59. And he does not get the basket, but will shoot two. And I know that Patterson really wanted that ball here on the right wing. As Jones penetrated left, he dragged the entire defense of Grambling right here. He penetrates left. And Patterson is oh, yeah, right on that right back. wing Ooh. for a wide open shot. Yes. That could have been a dunk on the backside that shocked everybody. Either way. <laughs> Ramley now bringing in Pert along with Dallas Pope Hilliard. Jones shooting two free throws. And he misses the first. Oh, 
Irwin Ellis entering the game for Prairie View. So now they have trying to match size for size. The next on the second, 66-59 in favor of the Panthers. Smith gets a good pick from Perk and tried to go with an alley-oop to Moss, but right there is Prairie View to swat it away. Good defense by Andrus. Swatting that ball away. Foul called on Grambling. Dennis Jones now to shoot two. And he misses the first. Got to be able to close out games. Close out games. Connects on the second. Eight point ball game. Smith connects for three and a timeout call by Grambling. This G man won't stop. Ivy Smith, all swag first team. Step back, gather, knock it down. They needed that basket in a big way. They had gone their last three minutes, 28 seconds without a bucket, and it couldn't have come at a better time for Grambling. Yeah, Grambling had missed their last four or five. Now it's a five-point game. Now, when you think back, think about the last two free throws that Jones missed. Yes. So this would this it would still be almost an eight-point game, seven, eight-point game, and now it's a five-point game because you knocked down a three-pointer, and Jones missed two free throws. He just went fifty percent in the last last couple of times he went to the line. And you know, Grambling is going to bring pressure. They they've avoided. Making turnovers the last couple of times, but they tore it in in a dangerous area once again. Foul call. And Jackson is like, who, who is the foul on? They're saying it was a hat. I think what he's objecting to more than anything else, it's the trailing official who made that call. He was clearly beyond half court making that call. I mean, maybe he has bionic eyes. But he called it, he called it on Prince Moss away from the ball. I think that's what he called. Well, no. No, he, it looks like Ivy may have reached in. It's a mystery to all of us. Yes, he did call the foul on Ivy. Yep. I, I, I will say, he did have position and he was looking. He's just a little far away. And connects on the second is Darius Wood. Now it's go time if you're Grambling. You're down 69-62. You need buckets on every possession. Miss there and a putback but a foul. Mapoyo able to leap over everyone, get possession, and now he'll shoot two. And here in the replay, you'll see how many white jerseys help. Not all, everybody has to go over and help. Some, some, of, some of the other players' responsibility is to box out. Correct. That's what defensive rotation is. So now you have four players over there and no one's boxing out. Apoyo misses the first. Gaston coming in. He has four fouls. And Blackston coming in for Prairie View. Mapoyo connects, six-point game. Foul by Prince Moss, quickly, with 123 left to play in regulation. Yeah, Gremlin here is trying to, they're, they're trying to extend this game, give themselves an opportunity to knock down some big shots. 
and put the pressure on Prairie View to continue to knock down free throws at, at, at the free throw line. Darius Williams connects on the first free throw. And Prairie View, in the last two minutes and 35 seconds, have not scored a field goal. Only score has come from the free throw line. Extends the lead to eight. Smith trying to find something to go with, and he gets it over to Rabario. Back over to Smith off a deflection, and he hits nothing. One minute and counting. Up. Oh. Papoyo knocks it off. And out of bounds. Dude, there was nowhere to go. I would have just stood there. If I'm grandma, I would have just stood there and took a charge. There's nowhere for Jones to go. You've got to play under control, especially in important moments of the game. And Rabario did not hear the first whistle. He's playing hard. <laughs> Blackston to shoot two. And he connects. Free throw here will make the largest lead of the afternoon for the Panthers. And just short. Prince Moss has to move fast. Less than a minute, and he misses. But Mopoyo right there with the dunk and a timeout call by Jackson. 72-65. And once again, Coach, Coach Byron is, is, is at half court. Like, everyone has to box out. It's not just one player. Everyone has to box out. Iron Smith keeping the intensity, keeping his players focused. Byron Smith named Coach of the Year with a record 17 and one record in the conference. Second full season as head coach. Three years ago, he came in as interim. He was awarded the head coaching job, and this has been his best uh, season. What a lot of people may not know is he did spend one season as the head coach of the Harlem Globetrotters. He is a alumnus of the University of Houston, and he got his start at Northwestern State, Louisiana, as a guard, was one of the leading scorers, top scorer in the state of Louisiana uh, in his high school days. And he wants to bring pressure, but also he wants to bring offense. And that's what he's been able to do with this Purview A&M ball club. And right now, they're just a minute away from making it to the finals of the SWAC tournament with a chance to sweep regular season and tournament titles. Good defense there by Moss for Grambling, but the three-pointer falls short. And now it'll be just a matter of connecting on those free throws and staying poised as Dennis Jones will go and shoot two more. Just under control. You've got to be under control. You know, not only are, is Grambling going to bring pressure, but they're going to double team. Got to be strong with the ball and knock down free throws, especially the front end. Jones connects on the front end. Each of them is like 
So now rest and recuperate for tomorrow's final will be Prairie View. And for Grambling, they have to look to next season to see if they can put it all together and make it all connect at the same time. Same way that Prairie View did this year during the regular season. Smith, and he is fouled. Two shot opportunity for Smith. You got some of the Prairie View and M players. John with the officials. And you're up by eight points. Just finished the game out. There's 40 <laughs> seconds to play. Right. Got to show a level of discipline. And for Grambling, if everything stays the same, they should have most of their team back. They only have two seniors on this squad. A large number of juniors. Which means head coach Dante Jackson can go in smiling, knowing, hey, we'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah, absolutely. And Byron Smith continuing to advocate even with a 74-67 lead. Jones in on his first attempt. Dennis Jones connects on the second. Nine point game, 39 seconds. And looks like it was a kick, ball, kick foul. Stuck a leg out is Darius Williams. Two shots for mm -hmm. Ivy Smith. Mm -hmm. Now remember, he leads the lead mm -hmm. in free throw mm -hmm. attempts mm -hmm. and free throws made. So he has a knack for this. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this penetration, you change direction. I mean, he's completely off balance right now. So you're off balance right there. You step through. I mean... But with him, with him being off balance, are you rewarding him for that wildness? Because he appeared to be totally out of control and was bailed out by the officials on that play. Well, I mean, you've seen a several plays like that throughout the game. So I don't know that it, I would call it rewarding, but you're definitely bailing him out. I mean, he was clearly off balance and looking to get to the free throw line. Foul called on Prince Moss. I think the other thing and to that add is his fifth foul. I think the other thing to add defensively, if you're Prairie View, don't let him roll the ball up the floor and then get momentum on you. If he's going to get momentum, let the clock be running. So have a player. It doesn't have to be the player that's defending him. Get, get the weakest player, get that defender to be up here, make him pick up that ball, and as he gains momentum, you have your defenders waiting for him. Correct. And the clock is running. Blackston connects on the first free throw. And I know Grambling right now is fouling here in the la latter seconds and last couple minutes of this game, but Prairie View has literally gone three minutes and 23 seconds without scoring. A bucket, a field goal. Correct. They've only scored from the free throw line. And they've increased their free throw percentage to 81% for the game. I mean, I guess he would have had to disappear to, not, to have not made contact. <laughs> or do they just want them to move out of the way? I'm, I'm not really sure. Lister comes in for Dennis Jones. I tell you what, if I was Coach Smith, I probably would get Devontae off the floor. Yes. He's, he's already played 
38, uh, 38 minutes. You've got to play tomorrow. And connects. Seven point game with less than 30 seconds. Blackson is fouled by Ivy Smith. And it looks like Smith will be replaced by Rivario. Uh, he will stay in, and they will put in Rivario in for Lavelle. And he connects. Gadsden. Polk Hilliard goes off the back part of the rim. And Darius Williams able to secure the rebound. And with 15.7, looks like that rebound will secure the win. <laughs> But it's not a happy prayer view bunch as that you don't see a lot of smiles with the players on the court. They know that they have some more work to do. Well, sure, they have work to do, but they, def they definitely took care of business in this game. This was a very well-played game by both teams, and, and Grambling can, would not go away. Grambling State would not go away. They continue to keep the pressure both offensively and defensively on Prairie View, and down the stretch, Prairie View and them had to execute in order to win this game. One more shot. Williams connects on the first. And connects on the second. 15 seconds left to play. And Prairie View, the regular season champions, will move on to the championship game. First time in almost 16 years that you can say PVA and M is going to the championship game. Final score, 81-71 in favor of the Purple and Gold from Brown Lee. For Brown Lee State, they finished the year at 17 wins and 16 losses, 10-8 for the regular season, and head coach Dante Jackson has something to build on with a large number of his squad coming back next season. And now we're joined off the Trish has Byron Smith and I think they're ready. And also have an extra visitor, Arthur, take it away. I think Arthur is still trying to get everyone well, set up in their position. Reaching the SWAC championship game. How does it feel? Uh, God is good, first of all. I'd be remiss if I didn't say, uh, uh, give thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all things are possible through him. Um, it's a great feeling right now, and um, just really excited to be moving on to the final game. Now, what did, were you able to do in the second half that seemed to take control down the stretch? I think we really neutralized Ivy Smith. He's a very good player. He's probably the quickest point guard. Uh, maybe in one of the quickest in the country. I think we neutralized it a little bit better. I think we got our own shooters, and we really, really attacked the glass in the second half. And uh, we made shots. We got hot, and uh, we made shots in the second half. What do you have to say about your song? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's probably the hardest playing, probably the greatest competitor I've ever coached. And if, if everybody in the country had a, a player like Devontae Patterson, college basketball would be much better off. He's a great kid, loves his teammates. He works and practices just as hard as he plays in the game. And uh, I'm just thankful to God that he's on my side. Uh, tomorrow night in this championship game, you will await the winner of Texas Southern Alabama State. What are your immediate thoughts on that right now? It'll be another battle. I mean, it is what it's all about. We've worked very, very hard to get to this point, and uh, we're looking forward to the challenge on tomorrow night. Two very good teams, and we'll come back tonight and watch them battle it out, but we'll be ready to play tomorrow uh, in the championship game. Congratulations again, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank right. you so much. Devontae, we'll turn our attention to you. You finished the game with 24 points, five rebounds, and, I'm sorry, eight rebounds, and you played almost the full 40 minutes. 
how do you feel? I feel amazing. First off, I want to give it to my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So that's what I want to give it to him. How, do you, how would you praise the, the effort of your team today? My team, like I said, it's not only me, uh, Lord Savior, it's a whole team with, with, with the Father up there. So we all come as one and let him lead us. What is your immediate thoughts? You guys were the number one seed coming into this tournament. You were the regular season champs in the SWAC. How would you like to make sure you finish the season as the number one team in the conference? Yes, sir. We want to push hard and continue to push hard as a team, not as an individual, but as a team. I asked your coach what his immediate thoughts on Texas Southern and Alabama State. What are your thoughts on those two teams? We let them slip up. That, that last time, so now we're gonna have to take it to him. Congratulations to you. Best of luck to you tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. James, back to you. Thank you so very much, Arthur and Cynthia. Your final thoughts on this game and the chances for Prairie View going into that final against either Alabama State or Texas Southern. I mean, you, you have a very aggressive Prairie View AM team, and they play both sides of the ball. Um, they just, just got to maintain, Prairie View does, their, their offensive intensity as they do defensively. Um, and, and I think they have a great chance. I, I thought they played a great game because the first half was very, very, it could have been anyone's game. But then in the second half, they turned it up defensively. They did exactly what Coach wanted them to do and got out on the fast break. And then down the stretch, they executed and knocked down some big shots. All right. And our final score, 81-71 to for Cynthia Cooper for Arthur Trish. I'm James Red. Thank you for watching this broadcast brought to you by ESPN at the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Final score, Prairie View defeats Grambling and moves on to the Swag Men's Championship game on Saturday, 81-71. Thank you for watching ESPN.